Everything else can wait Give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Give me you Everything else can wait Lord, give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Cause it's me God bless you, and welcome to Glory to Glory Radio program here on Choice Radio. Such an honor to be with you one more time this Saturday. Beautiful day outside, but I thank God for those that are able to join in with us today. And today is just going to really be a day of encouragement in the Word of God, and I believe that many of you are tuned in for that purpose only. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, we thank you, we glorify your name, we exalt you. Father God, let everything be done on this radio program, bring you glory and honor. Thank you for those that are listening today. Thank you for the ears of your people that will be open to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the expansion of the word of God that's been sown into the hearts of your people on a daily basis on this radio program on a weekly basis father we thank you that you're building up a great army of people that will go forth and move in the power of god so we give you glory and honor in jesus name amen amen and welcome again to glory to glory radio program this is pastor cheryl ashley from kingdom glory and fire international ministries and we are located at 5809 avenue t between East 58 and East 59th Street, one block over from King's Plaza. I want you to know that our ministry, God has called to our ministry an oasis. As I mentioned before, I told you what the name oasis means. It means a fertile spot in a desert where water can be found. That means that water is the living water. That water is the presence of God. That water is the anointing of God that is able to support and, 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 and supply your need. Amen. And also the ministry is a hospital. Why do I say that? Because many people come in one way and they leave another way. And it's also a safe haven for God's people. It's a place of prayer. We are so excited for what God is doing in his ministry. Not my ministry, but God's ministry. God has called us for such a time as this. And I know you're going to be blessed. It's a place where the power of God is in operation and the love of God is evident. Glory to God. Well, like I mentioned before, today I want, to, want it to be a day of encouragement. The Lord laid some things in my heart uh, earlier today and as I was meditating on the word a matter of fact let's go to that word it's in first Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 2 verse 4 and if you have your Bibles you can certainly uh, turn there with me <clears throat> it's going to bless you and my, my, my mission and my assignment there are many but one of my main assignment is to advance the kingdom of God in all the earth to let the body of Christ be awoken again to the desires of what the true meaning of the church is the church is not just a building but the church is us individually being filled with the glory of God and taking the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ outside of the four corners of the church into the, the, the world system so we can advance the kingdom of God so that we can see souls saved and, and, and miracle signs and wonders are happening. So we're excited. If you do have your Bible, again, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 4. And Paul talked about it and it says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the spirit and of power. 
And early this morning, as I was spending time with the Lord, he just began to uh, reveal to me that we as believers, we as the body of Christ, ought to be seeing some kind of, we ought to be seeing some kind of evidence of what we say that we believe in. Many people say that they may have a new car, they bought a new car, but you got to see the evidence of that new car. You might have bought a new house, and you have to see the evidence of that house. And many of you are saved. But we need to see, people need to see the evidence of your salvation. It's no more that we're going to talk about it, but we have to be about it. And God wants the people of God to be, uh, uh, to wake up and to arise to the reality of who they are and who they belong to and what God wants to do in their life. You're not here by purpose. I mean, you're not here by accident, but you're about here by divine appointment. And God wants to do something awesome and great in your life. So I'm excited about it. And so if you say that you have the power of God operating in your life, if you're a believer and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, God wants to use you just the way he used the disciples. He wants to use you just the way he used the apostles. You see, the word of God never changes. And as long as we get back to the foundation of the word of God, we will be safe again. Amen. God has given us a structure even for the church. Even in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he gave the, he gave the, uh, the instructions on how to build his church on, on, on the fivefold ministry, which is the apostle, which is the uh, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, wife, for the perfecting of the saint for the work of the ministry. Jesus also went on to say in the book of Matthew, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That rock is not just simply Peter, but the rock of revelation, the revelation of what we're going to receive from heaven. God begins <clears throat> many times as you in the presence of God, the Lord himself will begin to download information onto you. He'll begin to give you understanding into the word. I oftentimes say the word of God is pregnant. You can read the same word over and over and over. Uh, uh, the same verse over and over the scripture the same for two two months and you go back to it and God shows you another revelation why because God is the God of the now so many of you need to understand that what you experienced five years ago or or the move of God you experienced in your life or even what happened in your prayer life last week God wants to do something new today because God is a moving God he's he's always willing for those that seek him the Bible says that you'll be found of him and he simply wants to reveal himself unto you so I believe that this is the time and this is the season that God wants to bring his people up into another dimension of knowing who he is and who they belong to. Unless you understand the purpose of a thing, it's going to be abused. And so it's no more abuse that God wants to see in the body of Christ. He wants us to rise up to the true church and what he has called us to do, and that is to establish the kingdom of God in all the earth. And, and foremost, the most important thing that Jesus came to do is to save those that were lost. Amen. Have you told anybody about Jesus lately? Have you? Well, guess what? It's not up to you. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by spirit. And all you have to do, just begin to move forward in faith and understand it. As you open your mouth, God is going to fill it. And he'll put the right words in your mouth at the right time to set somebody free, to encourage someone. Amen. So that's what God wants to do. And I'm very excited about this move of God happening even in kingdom glory and fire international ministries you hear me talk about it all the time and i'm excited why because god manifests himself in the midst of us it's not about man but whenever we uh, uh set the atmosphere for the lord to uh manifest and the lord to touch his people and one thing god wants us to understand that it's not about us amen god uses any vessel he chooses to use but once we live a life of surrender once we live a life of consecration and that's what i want to talk about Listen, let there be evidence of your kingdom power in operation in your life. That's what God, people need to begin to ask the Lord. Lord, if I'm really saved, why is my life the way it is? What is the missing ingredient? Am I not in the word? Am I not in prayer? What is it that I'm not doing? Listen, if you're saved today, it's a, it's a continual Bible So You got to work out your soul salvation. You got to keep moving. You got to keep reading. You got to keep uh, developing the muscle of your spirit so that you can begin to get stronger and stronger and to come become a son of God. God don't want you to be a baby anymore. It's time to grow up. Glory to God. It's time to get off that nipple. It's time to be bold for the things of God because the hour is drawing near. 
That is why God wants use of you today. The hour is drawing near. There's no more time to play church, people of God. Listen to me. Listen, no more time. Those days are over. God is looking for from radical people. He's looking for people that are sold out to his cause. Amen. And that's what he talked about earlier. He said, we talk about all these different people. Smith Wigglesworth, we know about the great pioneers of the faith. We know about Catherine Coleman and, and John Tozer and all these great men and women of God. But guess what? They were sold out. They were sold out for the cause. They lived a life of consecration. They lived a life of holiness. They lived a life of purity. They lived a life of fasting. So these are the things that continually keep the fire of God burning in your life. It just does not happen immediately or automatically. You have to do something to fan the fame of the Holy Spirit in your life on a daily basis. And guess what? It starts in prayer. We had a mighty move of God last night in our prayer our, our, our service. It was powerful. And God began to speak to us. And I felt the urgency uh, again from the Lord uh, saying it's time to pray. It's time that the body of Christ get back to that place of prayer. It's time that we uh, put our, our, our traditions aside and, and put our agendas aside and what we want to do and how we should build our church. But God wants us to understand today that if we will seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, all things will be added unto you. And I believe that place where we first met God, that place where God began to reveal his vision and the assignment for our lives was in prayer. And that's the same place where you have to remain. Did you hear that? I'm talking not only just the leaders, but I'm talking about individuals, even if you just got saved. It, it, you, you have to continue to walk the walk. You've got to continue to feed your spirit the word of God so that you can begin to grow and develop and mature the way that God wants you to mature. Amen. So God is good. God is good. For those that just tuned in, again, this is Pastor Sherry Lashley from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries. And I'd love to invite you to come out tomorrow and worship with us. Our services start at 11 uh, p.m. I'm sorry, 11 a.m. in the morning. And we'd love for you to come and be blessed by what God is doing in the house called Oasis, a place where the you can find refuge, a place where the water of God, the river of God, the presence of God is in operation, a place where you will come in one way and you will be changed, a place of transformation and I believe it and we give God all the glory and the honor and the praise for what he is doing amen what he is doing because it must be him and him alone that we need to again exalt in our churches amen so we have to get back to prayer as we began to pray uh, uh, last night, the Lord began to show us many things. As a matter of fact, we started talking about the blood of Jesus and how powerful the blood of Jesus is and how it applies and how we need to understand the, the covenant that we have and, and how it was in the Old Testament. And we thank God for the, uh, for the blood that was used with the lambs and goats, but there is a better promise and a better covenant that we have. And the blood of Jesus Christ speaks on our behalf. And so we began to teach about that last night and there were a couple of people that uh, came up with testimonies. I believe I shared one before. And I'm going to say it again to encourage someone. And she had a dream. And in the dream, it seemed like she was in a house. And she was there with some other people. And all of a sudden, she, she heard this banging on the door. Banging, banging very, very hard. Very as if that person just wanted the attention and they wanted to come in. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the door broke down. And all that they could see before them was this man, but it was a demonic uh, 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 agent, as the Lord showed her in the dream. But when she looked up, she saw that that individual could not pass inside of the house. And when she looked up, she saw the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ all over the doorposts of that door. Glory to God. And she just started to rejoice. So I'm letting you know there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There is healing for you today in the blood of Jesus. There is power in prayer. And I'm telling you, if you want us to touch and agree with you today, we have prayer warriors and intercessors standing by right now 
that will agree with your needs. And that number is 718. 531-0848. We are experiencing uh, 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 testimonies after testimonies of life being changed for the glory of God. We had this one young lady that came into the ministry maybe about three weeks ago. And one of the assignment that we have is to begin to teach people how to walk by faith. Because that's what the Bible says. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. And faith is what pleases God. And so many people are in the flesh and they, and they want so much from God. But God is concerned about your faith walk. He wants to know that you, when a crisis come, that you're standing on his word. That you're not going to buckle in and, and, and allow the enemy to have access uh, uh, to you more than necessary. So he wants you to stand in the word. And the word of God will forever uh, uh, come and, and ma be manifested in your life. The word of God, the Bible says, is forever settled in heaven. Amen? So the word of God. So give us a call right now. We want to pray with you. We want to touch and agree. And to let you know that God has not forgotten you. God is mindful of you. And wherever you are right now, God wants to touch you. And he wants to make you hold and he wants to breathe life into you again. Many of you have been discouraged even by the institution of the church. And you heard what I said, institution, because it's simply a building. But you are the church that God wants to touch, what God wants to heal, that God wants to deliver, that God wants to set free so that he can pour his anointing in you and he can pour his glory inside of you so that you can become a glory carrier so you can become the hands and the feet and the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ that you can become that person that understands it's not about just coming to church on a Sunday or Wednesday or a Friday or whenever we come together collectively as a body but we come so you can be equipped according to the, uh, the scriptures with the fivefold ministry to be built up and you need to begin to take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ outside of the church. You can do it if you got the Holy Ghost in you. Begin to consecrate yourself. Begin to go on a fast. Begin to allow the Lord to speak to you and to lead you. That's what we talked about last week. We began to talk about hearing the voice of God. And the Lord began to challenge many people because what happens, the Bible says, my sheep hears my voice. And many of you are not hearing the voice of God. But why? Because you're not positioned in prayer. So the more time you spend in, in prayer, the more time you understand that it is God that wants to speak to you. He wants you to hear his voice more than you want to hear him. But he said, you got to seek him. There is something that you have to do. You have something that you have to access. And that is coming into the presence of God, surrendering your life unto God, literally yielding yourself to God so God can have his way in your way, in your life. Amen. So today is your day of a word of encouragement to let you know God has not forgotten you and that God loves you and he wants to see the best in your life. Now, as I talked about you having the anointing, there's a price to pay for the anointing. Many people look at all these great men and women of God and they say, yes, I want to do what they do and I want to be anointed like so-and-so. Listen, you don't have to be concerned about anybody else's anointing. God has anointed you, God has caught you, and God has equipped you. Whatever area of, of, of life that he has anointed you for, he will equip you for that. See, everybody can't be the hands and everybody can't be the feet and everybody can't be the arm. But whatever part that you fit in the body, God is going to give you that grace that you need to fulfill that purpose that he has for you so the anointing comes with a price listen salvation is free but the anointing is costly did you hear that oh yes the anointing is costly it's going to cost you something and what is that cost I'm talking about that cost is praying paying the price of denying your flesh People don't want to hear about that. <laughs> People don't want to hear about denying their flesh. And, uh, and the body of Christ, you know, they, they think it's okay just to uh, live the same way that they used to live when they came into the kingdom of God. But God is calling you right now to change. God is calling you into another level of, of consecration, another level of holiness. All right? And so another way that you can begin to activate the anointing of God in your life and paying the price is turning down your plate. What does that mean? Fasting. Fasting. You would be surprised how many, uh, 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 how many days of fasting like Smith Wigglesworth and all these great men and women of God, they do. But we don't know what they do in secret. But the Bible says whatever you do in secret, he will reward you openly. See, you can hide from man, but you cannot hide but God. 
because the anointing comes through the pride. So any great man or woman of God that you see moving in the supernatural and moving into miracle signs and wonders and moving into, into, into seeing the anointing so tangible upon their lives because the Holy Spirit just invades their every part of their body is that they're a person that sacrifices. They yield their bodies to the Lord so he can have his way. They yield their bodies so they can decrease. Listen, when God is about to use a man or woman of God, there can be no flesh in the way. God doesn't want to see flesh. God wants that when people come in to the sanctuary, when men and women of God is, is leading people and, and giving the word of God, they ought not to see you, but they ought to hear God and they ought to see God. Are you hearing me? So God is changing. There is what you call a changing of the guard in our days because God is fed up with the churches as usual. He wants his power back in the church. He wants his anointing flowing. He wants his glory. He wants his presence back in the church. Glory to God. And I'm never going to stop preaching it. I'm, I want to experience God more than I did last year, more than I did last week, more than I did even this morning in my prayer. I want more of him and less of me. I believe that when we spend more time in the presence of God and we have that intimate relationship and that communion every day, we understand how little we are and we understand how big our God is and we also understand how much we need him. That's the problem in the body of Christ. Everybody is, 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 is on their own. They're doing their own thing. They have their own agenda. No one is going back and saying, God, what do you want for me to do today? God, what do you want in the ministry? How do you want it to be handled? All of a sudden, God has given us stewardship over certain things. And all of a sudden, we forgot about the person who gave us the vision. You can't forget. God wants a continual pouring in. He wants for you to come to him. Remember, hearing the voice of God. Having a conversation with God is not a monologue, but it's a dialogue. You talk, then he talks. Then he talks, and then you talk. That's what he wants. It's just that simple. But you have to begin to start where you are. You have to begin to practice the presence of God. Listen, give us a call right now. 718. 531-0848. I want to pray with you. I want to touch and agree with you for your need right now. We have intercessors and prayer warriors that standing by that are willing to take your call. I don't care even if the phone lines are busy. Keep on calling. Leave a message. But we know we are people of prayer. And we know that prayer produces power. And prayer also produces results. And so I decree and declare today that today is your day for breakthrough. Today is your day of deliverance. Today Today is your day of healing. Today is your day that you're going to step out of the old and you're going to come into something new with him. Glory to God. As you begin to activate that, that time again in prayer, you're going to begin to see the word of God like never before. God is going to rain down manna from heaven. Glory to God. Upon many of you that will begin to get back to that place of prayer. Paul lived a life of prayer. He understood he was a man that moved in miracle signs and wonders. What do you think about the apostles? They were men of prayer. They were men of unity. They were men of love. They understood their mandate and they continued to depend upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and they shall not get weary. They shall run, sorry, and they shall not get weary and they shall walk and not faint. So God wants you to know today, mount up in the presence of God. Glory to God. Mount up. Get into the present get into the word get into the text get into a, a church that teaches bible get into the place where you can apply the word of god that you're not just being <clears throat> hearers only but you are becoming doers of the word and I'm telling you, we are seeing that happen in kingdom glory and fire international people <clears throat> international ministries Excuse me. People are coming in one way and we're teaching them the foundation and the simplicity of applying the word of God. Not what we say, but what God's word says. Glory to God. And they are experiencing uh, God in a new way in their own prayer time. They're coming back and sharing testimonies, how they're hearing the voice of God and how God has opened up doors for them and how God is moving things for them. I'm telling you, it's awesome, your relationship with God. Don't be denied. Don't let man define who you are, but God has called you 
God has called you to be the head and not the tail. God has called you to be kings and priests in the earth. God has called you to establish the kingdom and advance the kingdom and impact the world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is for that reason why the Son of Man came, that he will destroy the works of the enemy. And God has also given us that mandate. He has given us that assignment to continue what the disciples did, to continue what the apostles did. And now it's up to us. This generation has con has been given that same mandate and never changed. Man change it, tradition change it, religion change it, church institution change it, but God never changed it. God meant what he said. He said, I came and he said, repent ye and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, he went about all, uh, all Galilee preaching and teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's why he came. And the gospel of the kingdom has attached with that miracle signs and wonders. The gospel of the kingdom, Jesus went everywhere in the, in, with the heart of compassion and everywhere that he went, he healed, he set free, and he delivered. So I'm letting you know today, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you want to touch your broken heart today. He wants to heal your broken heart today. He wants to bring healing to your body, to your mind, in the name of Jesus. So I speak that even now to those that are listening under the sound of my voice. I decree and I declare it over your life that everything and every tra every every tricks and traps of the enemy will be broken over your life in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare liberty is your portion. Prosperity is your portion. Increase is your portion in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that God, that you will do something great and miraculous for them. God, I decree and I declare that the favor of God will be seen upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray even now, God, for those that are listening, God, that you'll give them a hunger. You'll give them a desire for more of you. Lord God, you said it in your word that you will give us the desires of our heart. So God, give them the desire of the kingdom. Give them the desire to pray. Give them the desire to live a holy life. Give them the desire to live a consecrated life before you, oh God, so that you can use them to bring glory and honor to your name. Glory to God. Well, I pray that you are being blessed so far by these programs that are uh, weekly uh, programs, Glory to Glory, because really my mission and my desire and my hunger is to see the body of Christ begin to move in, in, in the power and the authority that the Lord Jesus Christ told us that we can walk in. I don't see much of it at all. All I'm hearing is a lot of talk, but there is no power. But I'm here to let you know, if we are believers, if we are true sons of God, if we are the true church, there must be evidence to back up what we say we believe in. And we must see the miracles. We must see people's bodies being healed. We must see our people being saved. Glory to God. Nobody call prayer line anymore in churches. They just assume that everybody is saved. But you don't know who God is going to bring into the four doors of that church. So we got to be prepared to share the gospel of the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them. Because the coming of the Lord is, is near. And we have to get about our father's business. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what Jesus said. He says, I'm about my father's business. He told the disciples, my food is not to eat, literally, but it's to do the will of the father. Glory to God. And that's what we need to get back to. God, what is your assignment? What is your will for my life? Lord, what? What is the will for this church? Glory to God. God, get me back to that place where I can hear your voice again, that I can continue to do the will of the Father, where I can one day say, glory to God, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. That's what I want to hear. Listen, when you go to heaven, you're not going to hear God says, oh, welcome, my good and faithful uh, uh, evangelist or, or bishop. And see, people are known on earth by their name. And many people are known on earth because they may have a mega ministry and all these different things. But I want to be known as a servant of God. I want to be known as one that will do the will of God despite of what the world says, despite of what the institution says. I want to be able to hear God and to execute what I hear God say. How many people want to get to that dimension? You, you know what that means? You have to forget about yourself. You cannot have any reputation at all. You have to understand that God paid the price to set you free. God paid the price to give you everlasting life. God paid the price so now you can do the will of the Father. Glory to God. So listen, <clears throat> there is no more time to sit around 
and wait and be concerned about God. What, what do you want me to do? Simply ask. The Bible says if you ask, you shall receive. Amen? So this is good things today. Yes, so we talked about people moving in the miracle signs and wonders. And I believe that there is coming an awakening. Not just a revival. See, God has been, God, God has been trying to revive the people of God for a very long time. And I still believe that there's a mighty move of the spirit that's going to uh, flood the doors of the church once again and flood the, 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 the streets of our, of our communities again. I believe it. I believe that the glory of God is going to fill the earth as the water fill the sea. I believe it. I believe that God wants to reveal himself to the people of God, especially the body of God, in a great and mighty way. I believe it. And I'm expecting it. See, if you're not a believer, it's not going to happen for you. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> That's why God said, the Bible says in, in the book of Mark, it said that those that believe, these are the signs that shall follow them. So I don't argue with people anymore. I just simply believe. I am a believer. Amen? So if you believe what God says in the New Testament, the better covenant, I believe he says if, if you believe that these signs shall follow you, in the name of Jesus, you shall cast out devil. I believe that. You shall speak with new tongues. I believe that. You should lay hands on the sick and they shall... I believe it. Glory to God because I'm a believer. Whatever God says that I can do, I know I can do. And I'm here to let you know the same thing. Whatever God says you can do, you can do. If you see it in the word of God, you can hold it up to God because God is not a man that he shall lie. Not a son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he will make it good. Amen? So we got to get back to that place. And I'm telling you, even in the place of prayer, it will help you to build your faith and trust in God. Oh, that's powerful. So when you begin to lack the presence of God and lack the prayer and lack uh, uh, intimacy with God, all of a sudden people begin to be like Lone Ranger because now they've got to try to figure it out all by themselves. But God doesn't want that. God has called the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, who is not just an it, but he's a person. Amen. That's been given to us, the gift of the Holy Spirit, to lead us and to guide us and to direct us into all truth. He has been, he has been sent to assist us with the, with the purposes of God and the mission that God has called us to this earth to do. Amen. So you're not by yourself anymore. So depend upon God. Let that be your prayer today. Lord, I surrender. I surrender all, Lord. I don't want to look at what man or woman say, but God, I simply want you. I just simply want you to breathe fresh upon me again. And I promise you, if you begin to speak to God like that in sincerity of heart, God will touch you again. He will revive your spirit. He will pour oil upon you. Glory to God. He will bring you to a new place with him. People of God, it's time to break out of the complacency of church as usual. Glory to God. God wants to do something new. He is the God of the new. He's the God. He reveals himself in so many different ways. Don't contain God. Many people, many institutions, they contain God. They say, well, this is how God works. This is what he does. But listen, sometimes God, not man, he wants to do something new. And we have to get out of the way, set the atmosphere with the presence of God, and allow God to have his way and to touch his people once, once more. I believe it. I believe it. I desire to walk in that place of, of seeing miracle signs and wonders and, and seeing God do what he did in the book of uh, 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 the, the Gospels and seeing how God used regular men and women to do extraordinary things. And guess what? You can be that person too. You're not exempt. It's not just for the fivefold ministries. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm letting you know. So they that believe. Those that believe, not just uh, God, uh, apostles and, and prophets and teachers and, and pastors, but they that believe, God wants to use you too. He wants to use you, he wants to equip you, he wants to fill you. And he wants for you too to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, amen? So the world must see an evidence of who we say that we are. The world must see that we are not just uh, uh, living a life of, 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 of going by day by day. The world must see us healed. The world must see us walking in our prosperity. The world must see that the God that we say that we serve is a good God. <laughs> Amen. How many people will say, well, God is a good God. Every many times you hear people say, well, I'm tired. I'm broke. I'm just, it's all negative things, but God wants us to rise up and understand who we are and who we belong to and that we must begin to manifest the kingdom of God in demonstrating with evidence of miracle signs and wonders. And I'm here to let you know, this is what we're experiencing, Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministry. So I'm going to challenge you. 
to come and worship with us. See for yourself. See for yourself what God is doing in the midst of us. I am telling you, it's awesome. We have abandoned ourselves. We have, we have forgotten about our agenda. And Lord, just have your way. Use us, Lord God. We cry out for the presence of God because we understand without him, we can do nothing. You see, see, I, 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 I say to people all the time, you know, I, I, I am of no reputation, you see, because I don't have many degrees behind my name, but all I am is a, a vessel. All I am is a yielded vessel. And I say, God, if you can use anything, use me. Hallelujah. And God is using me for his glory. And that's what God wants for you to do. He don't want you to figure out how to do this thing. Come to him as a little child. And God will begin to equip you. will begin to pour purpose inside of your life to let you know what he has called you to do. So we need to be sold out for Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to be sold out for Jesus? Are you ready to put the things of the world aside? Are you ready to relinquish all of your will and let God have his will in your life? Jesus lived a life of surrender unto the Father's will. Even in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was facing such persecution and pain and, and all that he was going through emotionally. But yet he said, if this cup, God, if this cup, if this cup, not, if you don't let this cup pass me, in other words, let your will be done. He was not going to fight the will of God. And many of you have been, have been, have been resisting the move of God. Many of you have been saying, well, God, I'm used to it this way, but God, I don't know how it's going to feel if I, if I do this or I do that. Let God have his way. He's God. He's God above every God. He's the only true, wise, and living God. And so we got to get back to that place of trusting God, knowing that what we experienced and what we did a year ago or two years ago or five years ago in our ministry may not be something that works today. But we need to get back to the drawing board. We need to get back to that place of prayer. We need to get back to that place of surrender. We need to get back to that place of yielding to the God and yielding to the person that called you in the first place and say, Lord, have your way. Breathe fresh upon me again. Give me eyes to see what I can't see. Amen. And I promise you, God will move on your behalf and he will bring new life into your ministry. And that's what we're experiencing. It's nothing about us. It's not about us. Come on now. Let's, let's be real. It's never about the people. It's about God. And he's simply looking for people that will carry the presence of God, that will yield their will to his will, and he will use them. Glory to God. So we need to, begin, we need to repent even individually and collectively as a body of Christ. We need to repent. We need to ask the Lord to put us back on the potter's wheel. We need to ask him to put us back on the potter's wheel because he is the potter and we are the clay. And many of us, many of the believers, many of you are listening today, you have gotten off the potter's wheel. You have gotten off. You say, well, God, maybe God is not moving too fast. And maybe, God, uh, I've been praying for this for so long. And, and God, I'm not seeing the answer. As a matter of fact, it seemed like it's getting worse today. But I want you to know, let God work it out. He is God. Trust him. The Bible says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lead not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let God put you back in the potter's wheel again. Let him mold you again. Let him, let him, let him, let him do a work in your life again. Glory to God. Let him be in charge of your life again. <laughs> I promise you. It's, sometimes it's a process, but let me tell you something. You cannot get to the palace until you go through the process. Amen. You got to go low in order for God to begin to exalt you. We all had to go through the process. All of us had to be purified. Jesus, I mean, look at, look at, look at, look at uh, jo Joseph. Look at David. David had to go through the wilderness. You know, he never knew where God was going to take him. All he knew that he was anointed, you know, when he was a shepherd boy. But he never understood the process and what he had to go through. People talking about him, Saul running after him, trying to kill him. All the things that we had to go through. But don't give up hope. Glory to God. I'm here to encourage you today. Don't give up hope. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I am letting you know he loves you. And he wants the best for you. All good and perfect gift comes from a God, come from above. Don't give up now. Don't give up believing God for your answer because it shall surely come to pass if you continue to speak faith and you will see the manifestation of God in your life. Glory to God. I'm so excited uh, to bring the word of God and to bring words of encouragement for you, uh, to you. And I pray that you're being blessed. And again, for those that just joined in, uh, my name is Pastor Cheryl Ashley.
from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries, and we're located at 5809 Avenue T between East 58 and East 59th Street. I'd love to invite you, personally invite you to come and worship with us uh, on Sundays. Uh, we have our worship power pack services, awesome presence and move of God happening in the midst of God's people. People are being lead, people are leaving change and transformed. We're getting testimonies after testimonies, and I'd love for you to come and drink of the well of water. Come and drink from the presence of God. Come and experience God in a new way. Amen? And so if you need to get directions to our church, please give us a call right now. 718-531-0848. We have intercessors and prayer warriors standing by to receive your call. Amen? So we'd love to have you come, and we'll also have a wonderful gift for you as well. Um, also, I want to remind many of you, we have uh, an upcoming concert, uh, which is going to be taking place Saturday, May 28th, and uh, it's going to be called, it's a youth explosion for our youths, but everyone is welcome to come. We want everyone of all ages to come and experience what God is doing in this hour among our youths, and that's going to be May, uh, Saturday, May 28th, starting at 6 p.m., and uh, Richie Righteous will be the gospel artist. It's going to be very powerful, I tell you. It's going to be turn up time for Jesus, and I'm excited about it because our young people, even in our ministry, uh, is experiencing the Lord in such a mighty and tangible way and they're, they're, they're being filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of them are saved because we preach salvation. We let them understand even at a young age you need to know the Lord. And um, uh, I told you about a month ago our young people just began to run towards the altar and, and the Holy Spirit just uh, invaded them and as they began to cry out to God uh, God touched them and he healed them and, uh, and he, and he um, filled them with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're hungry for God. They really are. And I believe that God is doing something in the midst of our young people. So even for, for pastors and leaders, I would love to for you to invite even your um, youth ministry to come and be a part of what God is doing in, 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 in Brooklyn. Amen? It's not about just the church, but it's about the kingdom. It's about what God is doing in this hour. So again, if you need more information, please give us a call at 718 718- Five three one zero eight four eight. You will be blessed. Awesome. Glory to God. I will be right back. So give me you. Give me you. Come on, say, give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. God bless you and welcome again to Glory to Glory radio program. This is Pastor Cheryl Ashley from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries and we're located at 585809 Avenue T between East 58 and East 59th Street. Welcome and welcome and I pray that you are being blessed so far. Amen. And again, I just want to remind if there's any person right now listening that you need prayer for whatever purposes, healing. I'm telling you, healing is happening in the midst of of our ministry as well and once a month we have on a Wednesday midweek miracle uh, revival service and even on a Wednesday we had one last Wednesday and people were just encouraged and, and changed and transformed and also being healed because the Lord let us know that it is the will of the Father that we are healed and that we are made whole amen so if you have a need give us a call right now 718-531-0848 Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries we are here for the needs of the people give us a call I don't care what it is we will touch and agree with you and all we want to know is to hear the testimony of what God is doing amen glory to God we're going to go back to the original text that we began to uh, talk about and this is found in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses uh, 4 and we began to read where it says Paul says and my speech and my preaching 
was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit. See, the demonstration is not of you, but the demonstration is of the Spirit. Amen. And God has given us the nine gifts of the spirit, according to the book of Corinthians. And those nine gifts of the spirit, once you're a believer and you're filled, the Holy Spirit can use you at any moment to, uh, to manifest those gifts. And so, and so Paul understood that. He understood that uh, his preaching or his, his teaching and, and, and what God was doing among him and in him was not just because of him, but because of who was inside of him, the Holy Spirit. So he understood that it was by the demonstration of the Spirit and um, the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That's important to understand. And this is what he says in verse 5, that your fate, hear that, that your fate should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. We have to begin to take our eyes off of man. We got to begin to understand that all men are, or women are men. We are, we're vessels. But understand that you too can be connected to God. You too can hear from God. That is my desire. When people come in, the first thing I want to, I want to, I want to know where they are in the spirit. If they just got saved and they'll be taught, we have Bible classes and we have Bible lessons. We have courses to help them along the way so that they can grow and develop and begin to get trained in the word of God, understanding the word of God, walk in the word of God, not just hearing it and all these different things. They also begin to understand uh, the importance of prayer. And as a new believer, uh, they have to read the word. They have to communicate with God. So these are just little foundational things that we do. And so when they, when they begin to experience God for themselves, they know it's not about a man, but it's about God. Amen. And many leaders got to begin to do that. Take your, take, take yourself out of the equation. Lead the people to God, not to yourself. Allow the people to be dependent upon God. You're only a mouthpiece, but let the people be more dependent upon God than they are on you. I don't know who that's for, but that's the truth. All right. And so that it says, so that your fate in verse five, should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. When we begin to see miracles happen, even in our ministry, when we begin to see uh, people's lives being transformed and changed by the power of the word of God and by them applying it to the word of God, all we have to do is just give God glory because we know it's not about us. Amen. It's not about us. But all we do is say, God, do it again. Continue to touch your people again. Continue to heal your people. Continue to save your people. And that's what we need to do. Take the attention off of you and bring it on God. So I'm letting you know God is mindful and he's ready to deliver you is ready to heal you is ready to set you free because god is a what he's a good god so now as i mentioned before as well allow god to keep you on that potter's wheel allow him to begin to go into the compartments of your heart and begin to clean some things out of you listen i am telling you when god wants to use you you can't just go up there any old way you got to go through that process many people abort the process and they stop the process because it might feel god it's too uncomfortable lord i i want to eat i don't want to turn my plate down lord I, I i like i still like to do certain things in the world but listen if you have been crying out to God and you've been saying, God, use me, Lord, have your way in me. Now you have to be obedient to what God is saying for you to do. Amen. And when you're obedient to God, you'll begin to see those results. And so, but God wants you to know today, as you continue to allow him to do a work in your life, that he will continue the great work that he says that he is going to do in your life. And God wants you to know also today, if you're fallen, I'm not here to condemn anyone because I know the mercies of God. Hear me clearly. I understand the mercies of God. I was once there. Many of you know my testimony. Amen. I, I, was, I was in ministry and I was serving an awesome, powerful woman of God. I was in ministry, loved the Lord. And as a result of, of me moving out of the presence of God, stop reading my word because I got church hurt. I thought I could have done it on my own. And before I knew it, I was out in the world. And by the time I knew it, it was four and a half, five years that I was out in the world. But by the mercy and the grace of God, he brought me back and he brought me back into purpose. So 
I, I'm really about five years behind my time from where I really should have been. But I'm grateful to God for bringing me back to purpose, and purpose could not die in my life. So I'm encouraging you today, no matter where you are, for those that might have sinned and even backsliders, I want to encourage you today because I was once a backslider. I was once a prodigal son. I was once a Jonah. And I'm letting you know that God loves you and it's time to come back home. Don't resist the, 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 the moving of the Holy Spirit upon your heart. Don't resist. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit anymore. He's calling you back to purpose. He's in need of you in the kingdom. So today's your day to say, Lord, I surrender all. And God wants you to know, you can get right back up again. If you're falling, get right back up again. Get back on that potter's wheel. Let him do a work inside of you. Let him mold you. Let him, let him purge you. Let him cleanse you. Let him purify you. Let him uh, 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 help you to live that life of holiness. You cannot do it by yourself. That's where many believers fail uh, because they think that they can live a holy life on their own. You cannot live a holy life on your own uh, besides uh, uh, the presence of God and acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is holy. So he's the one that's going to teach you and help you to be holy. Amen. So you got to come into that place and surrender your life unto him and you will see the greatness uh, that God wants to do. God wants you to know he will do it again in your life. There's certain things he told me in praise to tell them. He's going to do it again in your life. And for those that have been discouraged and those that thought that, God, you can never use me again. Those that thought that, Lord, I, I messed up so badly. And many of you uh, are listening, uh, maybe a pastor, and, 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 and you came out of the will of God, and you shut your church down, and you thought that God has forgotten about you, but I'm here to let you know God has not forgotten about you. He's going to raise you up again with resurrection power. Where he's going to breathe life into you again because God says he is going to do it again in your life. Pick up that phone right now. I want to touch and agree with you, backsliders. I want to touch and agree with you, that pastor that have closed this church down. I want you to know God is going to do it again. Give us a call right now, 718-531-0848. God wants you to come back into alignment to his will now. Today is a day of salvation. Don't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone but today is that day that God wants to breathe fresh life into you God wants to use you again and God also wants you to know today that all is not lost see what the enemy meant for harm God is going to turn it around for your good glory to God that's what the enemy and even in the book of of, 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 of Corinthians it talks about that that had the enemy, had Satan knew uh, what was going to happen, he would not crucify the Lord of glory. Had he known that, that many of us uh, would be where we are today, had they known that Jesus was not just going to die, but he's going to be rose again on the third day, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. But I'm excited that he went to the cross for you and I. I'm excited that the blood of Jesus still has power. I'm excited that the word of God is sharper and quicker than any two-edged sword. I am excited to be a Christian. I'm excited to represent the kingdom of God because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm excited to know that what God has called me to do, I don't have to do it by myself, but God has sent me the help of the Holy Ghost to assist us in the will of God and the purposes of God. I am excited to say that I am a Christian. I'm excited to say that I'm an ambassador of Christ. I am a royal priest chosen by God. I'm excited to say that and you can be excited too. Glory to God. You can say that God breathed fresh upon me today. Today is your day and you've got to go on your knees and repent before God. Cry out to him. Seek him once again. Seek him once again. Begin to say God have your way so that your will can be done in my life. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not about preaching with enticing words of man wisdom but it's by the power of the Holy Ghost that God is going to set you free. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost that he's going to heal that body. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost that he's going to take you out of that place of, of stagnation and bring you into that place that he can begin to use you. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost and God wants your wisdom the wisdom not of man to rest upon your life today but understand the wisdom that comes from God will set you free and deliver you and heal you. God wants to bring you into deeper depths and higher heights. I believe that. And you have been asking for that. You have been asking God, I want more. God, is there really more? I'm here to let you know, yes, there is. Because God never changes. What God has done for one person, he will do it for you. All you have to do is ask. And there is more. And if you've been crying out for more, and you've been saying, God, 
touch me once more. Revive me once more. He's going to do that for you. Pick up that phone right now. We're about to close. 718-531-0848. And speak to our prayer partners. And let them know also that you want to, uh, you know, uh, be a part of what God is doing in kingdom glory. Amen. But before I go, I just want to pray a prayer for those that are listening right now. You might have just tuned into this radio program and you might have thought it might it was by accident but in fact it was by divine appointment for those that are listening today you have backslidden and you have been knowing that God is touching your heart or even pulling and tugging on your heart and you've been resisting uh, the, 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 the move and the, and, the, and the tug of the Holy Spirit but I want you to know today to surrender I want to pray a, pr a prayer with you a prayer of rededication a prayer of salvation for those that don't know Jesus Christ. And according to the word of God in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. Men complicate salvation, but God didn't. <laughs> it's a free choice though. All right. And remember, choice determines your destiny. And so today you can have a choice in where you're going to spend eternity. Today you have a choice to say yes to God. And the Bible says when you get saved, you have an everlasting life. So will you pray this simple prayer with me? Amen. Are you ready? Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you before. I come to you today as a sinner. I repent of all of my sins. And I'm asking you now to forgive me and to cleanse me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross over 2,000 years ago. And you are now alive and seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord Jesus, come on, say it. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender all unto you today. I am going to ask you to have your way. Lord, I have failed many times in trying to do it my way. But I'm totally relinquishing all of my will and surrendering to you today. Lord, your word says... Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I've just called upon your name, Lord. And I believe by faith that I'm now saved, that I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. If you have prayed that simple prayer, please give us a call at the ministry 718-531-0848 and we'd like to invite you to come and worship with us even tomorrow because we are a bible believing based church we believe in the word of god we teach the word of god i don't play around with that at all and would love to put some literature in your hand uh, some information to help you along with your new walk with christ glory welcome into the kingdom backsliders welcome back home i am telling you this is the best best decision that you could have ever made to God be the glory never forget Jesus Christ is Lord and he loves you and he has a great plan for your life don't give up mother on your children don't give up father on your son that 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 rejected you and and spoke about you don't give up continue to pray and continue to see the goodness of God in the land of the living be blessed and know Jesus loves you Jesus paid the great price for you. Give us a call now, 718-531-0848. And don't forget to uh, come and visit with us tomorrow, Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries at our worship service beginning at 11 a.m. sharp. That's what I say, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. A matter of fact, sometimes before that, we even start a little bit before because we want to be people of order and we want to be people on time. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Jesus Christ is Lord. You're listening to The Choice Radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Jesus is Lord.
Don't forget to download our mobile app. Go to your market and look for Choice Gospel Radio and share it with everyone. Choice Radio, your life.